you can stay connected because now we are going to have a, a short uh, discussion in between all of us. I would like to invite uh, the attendees that have presented a paper in this session here, up here, and uh, you can sit in here. And so uh, we can all discuss the uh, features. Uh, before uh, asking any questions, uh, if any of you has a question for them, uh, in order to start some kind of discussion, it would be uh, great. We have like 30 minutes more or less uh, of discussion. So, anyone got any comment or topic? Well, no? No one? Well, um, if, uh, if no one's got a view, okay. Probably to maybe we will discuss it. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, first, we try to organize a session with some uh, back colors. But if it's not uh, always possible, it was not always possible. So, maybe we have some. Whereas here, uh, not all, but uh, some press, because they uh, uh, just request that the presentations uh, are about producing the uh, design. The scheme is different, but uh, uh, design, uh, automation design. Uh, my uh, question, but some kind of jobs. Uh, some kind of problems, perhaps my question is uh, the first uh, the presentation. It's some kind of mind-blowing presentation because uh, of the, not of the results, but I'm uh, still with uh, uh, some imperfections, great imperfections, but uh, uh, in the perceived possibilities of a person. In a, uh, well, in a, in a not so far away uh, epoch, we may think of producing uh, architecture with uh, no heuristics. Uh, not uh, perceiving what is going to happen. And that is uh, <coughs> the moments I'm not comfortable with this. Uh, in the uh, two uh, presentations about uh, rituals, we understood that the rules of production is very mystic, they are some kind of uh, <laughs> Uh, rules that uh, uh, obey our own seeking and uh, we try to formalize them and uh, to make better rules. They are realistic, but the first presentation has uh, some seeking that uh, we cannot uh, fully understand. Uh, and uh, well, that clarifies something. I am going to say uh, when. Uh, when uh, Einstein, uh, well, when he was aware of the quantum mechanics, he said, God oh, does not play that. Well, I, I'm, I'm uh, almost in the same situation. <laughs> uh, and I would like to discuss this, uh, this problem. So, it was, uh, yeah. Right, so. Right. Thanks. Uh, yeah, it, it is. It is quite. I I, can, I think it's a paradigm shift, right? Um, because it's it's as if we can't. We no longer want to formalize it because we we see that it's not always possible to formalize all the possible rules, right? For that that's why the deep neural networks they they are so powerful. They they kind of unearth the un underlying patterns, right? But in a way, it's also interesting because it releases us from that burden of um, doing the formalization, right? Doing 
you know, every single rules is, I mean, I, I went through that part of my life as well in, in computation design and, and it's, it's painful. Um, so it's, it's, I'm happy to hear that uh, you find the, the methods interesting and in, in some sense frightening, which is, which is a, I suppose, a good thing um, to move forward. Um, yeah. But uh, I've looked at, in other projects, I've worked on more three-dimensional uh, high-rise building um, we're using uh, three-dimensional general adversarial networks. So for today's paper, I'm just really showing how to somehow kind of distribute, split the labor, right, between the, the human and the, the machine and making full use of their respective capabilities. Um, so I, maybe in future, I, I, I can share other papers uh, on more architectural, you know, real high-rise building, for instance. A simple one. I assume your latent space is two-dimensional. Then you ask why something. No, so the latent space is always high-dimensional, so it could be... How many dimensions and how do you sum it? So you have two dimensions. In, in, in some of the latent spaces, it, it will be 200 or 100 dimensions, right? But you move in that 100-dimensional space. Then you sum it like that. Yes. You send like a hundred, a hundred integers or five hundred flows. Yes, yes, point. yes, exactly. We move in that space. Um, and you, there are many ways to sample. So often we think that Euclidean is, is the best, but apparently for, for GANs, it's good to do this kind of a radial way of, so you have an arc. You don't interpolate yeah. from point to point. You do an arc, so it's smoother. No, no, I, yes, of course, yes. Yeah. We don't do so the, the sampling of the VAE. This was way the VAE. No, in this no. Yesterday we talked about VAE, but um, VAE results are so bad. So th this paper is on general adversarial network. Ah, but it is all bad. Okay. Yeah. That's why I said that. Uh, so my question is false because I, it wasn't about the dimensions. Kind of. But but even then. What is the VAE we discussed? So let's let's right. scrap it from the from the proceedings. But but I have tried VAE. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I have to. I, I would like to extend Franklin's question and um, your response that you split the labor between the machine and the human has a practical dimension. So I do understand why. But my question is, what are the conceptual gains of this approach? I think he he. And was right. The conceptual gain. In in can you elaborate on that? Like the in terms of yeah, the, the gain uh, from the point of view of design, the designer of the outcome. What are the conceptual, intellectual, or social gains? Yeah, because the your answer has to do with the label aspect. Like you split the label between the human and the computer. Yes. Yeah, so, right. So that's a practical, that's a mm. practical reason for what you do. But what is the conceptual reason? What do you do? What does, does the design again? Right. So if if you look at in in terms of like I mentioned about design by analogy, I talk about um, uh, this by association, right? This idea that we could we could not just combine, we could ban concepts, right? So if I have thrown in not just images of Henry Moore sculpture, if I throw in images of cats, right, it would bend the concept of a cat, the look and the concept of a Henry Moore sculpture. And the, I suppose the gain is to provide that so-called melting, right, that, um, that, that the, the act of creation book mentioned about this idea that we could inter intersect uh, reference plane, right, the reference plane, conceptual, conceptual plane of the cat conceptual plane of the uh, Henry Moore sculpture, and then you have that image. So the gain is, for design, is to expand that design space, right? So if you, of course, if you throw in uh, images of cats and dogs, th those are not important. In, in the end, you have to curate the data set, and then it makes sense to strategically ban those relevant concepts. And oftentimes, due to serendipity, if you combine so-called traditionally incompatible concepts, you may get something interesting out of it. So that, that is some kind of a gain to me. I hope I answer your question. It has to do with form searching. Yes, you, you're bending, you could actually bend concept like a cat building. What, what's that? 
right? But maybe because it could somehow figure out uh, with this sort of methods. Hello. Um, I just was wondering, I mean, I understand the relevance of the bending concept that you have just mentioned, but it is worried to me is that you are training networks with not a lot of samples, okay? So um, that's my personal opinion. Just for example, you have one, the 1,000, 2,000, the maximum that you have was 4,600. I don't think it's a, you know, training set enough, you know, for, for taking any kind of relevant conceptual decisions, you know, or paragraph definition conclusions. So, so my question is, uh, if that is a limitation you are aware of, and, and you, are, you mentioned it's just a game for you, okay? So, so I, I was wondering, is this leading to a proper you know, training or method that at some point will stop being just a game, mm -hmm. and being a proper you know, mathematically scientific-based method for developing a next step? Yes, so, the, when, so just to, for the first part, just to clarify, when I say 5,000 or 4,000, I'm not including the data augmentation part. So if I give you an image, let's say of my face, that's one data point, but I do data augmentation, meaning I kind of rotate my face, move my face around the picture frame, and these produce potentially hundreds of variations of that single original image, right? So we could say, we could then in the sense say that, okay, you have 5,000 images, but in fact, the model has been exposed to variation of that 5,000 and that may become 500,000. Um, so this is if you train from scratch. I showed some examples where I talk about pre-trained models. So uh, a popular way uh, or in, in the domain is that you use pre-trained model, you get the relevant features, and then you train on top of it with your own 5,000. So that pre-trained model, the big ones, been exposed to millions of images. Of course, the other question is, but those, those images will be not relevant as the kind of discussion I have uh, with uh, Tassos yesterday. Um, so that is then the burden of the designer to then filter out what's uh, not relevant. So I have this project where I'm also using a pre-trained models of facade. Uh, pre-trained models of images of real buildings and other stuff, like other classes, chairs, tables. So I have to deliberately ignore those parts, somehow, f again, figuring out where to take, where not to take. Um, yeah, so that's the, that's, that's the answer. Uh, have I missed out some <laughs> the other question? There's the other question, no? no I was asking you about the Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, so I'm, I'm actually, it's interesting that uh, uh, Emma, Emma is here. So, um, so surrogate model is, is one good way to explain this uh, uh, crisis of the lack of data set. So in his case, he have ways to simulate, right, with, I don't know, heat gain, heat loss. You could simulate for like, I don't know, 10 days with like get thousands and thousands and millions, or you can train for, I don't know, one month and you get all these synthetically generated simulated data set. So in theory, you can have as many as you want, right? If your data set comes from a simulated environment. But if you're saying that the data set comes from a real world scenario, like in a, in a medical domain where certain illnesses may not have that many images to learn from, then okay, you're stuck. So we would then do synthetic data generation again. And there are ways to kind of go around it. Uh, it sometimes I think the, the designer faces a problem, a chicken, a kind of a funny thing, right? Because we say that we want to generate more design, but to start with, you need even more design to train the AI model to generate more more design, right? So it's very strange. And therefore, there are moments where rule-based system becomes useful like in his case, doing a simulation, right? Or could be shape grammars, just generate many, many versions, and then you inject into the AI model. That would solve the data set problem. Actually, we do that. We, <laughs> we create our own data set with shape grammars. So I can use this and... <laughs> 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 the problem is, though, and I I'll be you know, half, half critical, half helpful here. 
The problem with it is because I fixed it. And, I mean, I, I spent a lot of hours playing to that ended nowhere. Is that the more complex the problem, process? So when we, we call something a design or a creation of something new, right? We have to first of all evaluate it uh, based on whether we are overfitting, whether whether there is an existing example that looks 90 per, 90 percent the same as the created one, right? Especially with VAEs and sorry, I stuck half in the conversation we had yesterday, but we well, can continue the gas, tonight. Yeah, the gas is a bit different, but again, you have to evaluate how far you are from the primary feeding tube that you you gave the system, right? your data, the real ones, not the, not the created, let's say, even in a gun. The problem is, and I faced it many times, right, and I, I've only succeeded a couple, is that even with, like most of my database, my data sets are like, uh, quarter, let's say quarter of a million proper ones without augmentation. Eh? Mm -hmm. um, and even then, so I was training staff for months, uh, is that you don't, when you have a very complex problem to generalize and you have many layers that they need to generalize, you know, kind of, you generalize one thing at the top layer, so the filter, then the filter of the filter, they have to start combining features, right? This is what, or especially for us in architecture that we also have like the, so it's not just cats and dogs that they have like uh, two eyes and a, an affair. So the generalization is very, si it's simpler than complex design problems because yeah. a cat has like four, usually four legs or something <laughs> that looks like a leg, two eyes, a shape with something in the middle of the human face, right? Yeah, a, 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 a type, a right. Problem. So there are not many things. And I realized that when you ask the system to produce something that has like the complexity of an, like even a, a street, a, a little 10 streets, a 10 street kind of um, urban um, kind of design, not design, like a, a set of streets, let's say. Yeah. It is a very complex generalization pro pro process and without like a lot of training sets that they have some sort of underlying general kind of, you know, connection. It's a bit hard. That's why I, I feel that you're getting this kind of feedback of it is just a mixing of, a, it's like putting stuff in a mixer. This is how it looks for, for many people. It's like putting all the ingredients of a, of a cake. I'm not a, good, I'm not a cook at all, so, but whatever. You put that in a mixer. That crazy egg. <laughs> you start scrambling, and if you, if you throw a fish in there, in the, sweet, in the sweet cake, it will do something. So it'll be, even if you throw like a like a piece of meat in a, in a, I don't know like a cake like a like a sweet cake right it'll come come out with something it might not you know it might not be suitable for a vegetarian but it will be something right so that's w why you're getting so I think you need to as a like critical and positive comment is like maybe you need to express a bit more. Nowadays that more people know about this, they can question more. In the beginning with Gans, it was like a free for all. Everyone would throw like a, like a cat and the dog and it was like a, a PhD. We seen many things. Uh, so I think now we have to be also a bit more critical and, and give probably in a presentation, give like 10 minutes to the failures and five minutes to the good because then the people realize, I mean, you. In one of the talks, I, I show like 10 slides of the failed ones, which they like really failed. Like I spent days looking at the black screen and you got black screens as well. In the end, you know, the gun goes crazy. It produces just black stuff. So I think it needs a bit more time from, from all of us to mm. give like the failed attempts and why they failed a bit more because then we get the, the audience to connect at least with the, with the positive side of it. Yeah, should, should, should have shown the, the process. But going back to an analogy of the, of the cooking, right, it's, it's really no longer about, about kind of a collage way of doing things, right, kind of a remixing. Because the, the model is alive in the sense that every time you train is a different thing, even though it's the same architecture, meaning the same architecture design of I don't know, 20 layers and whatever number of uh, kernels in each layer. And this is interesting. This is fast forward evolution, right? Fast forward evolutionary 
uh, algorithm in the sense in the tradition, the normal way of understanding evolutionary algorithms, but in the sense that we are compressing the learning. And and in in one project that I recently did uh, for an exhibition in Singapore is that uh, I showed, uh, which I didn't show here, that uh, the output when you train it for 2000, which is when you start to converge and it looks like a building, and when it's trained for 200, 210, 220, this, and these look a bit uncanny in the sense that they are a bit like, you know, just like a kid, right? When an adult drawing, let's say, draw a cat, right? A kid would just, you know, draw in a kind of, in a certain way than an adult would do, for instance. And that's actually quite interesting. So, in fact, going back to Sophie's question, Sophia's question is that the intellect, the game is actually you are working with a living model because um, the same the same tool, the same model, could depends how you train it, how long you train it, and all the different parameters which are just tweaking the learning rate and whatsoever, actually produce many models at the same time. It's like a tool with many versions of it, and they ha could produce results that are very different looking also. And there, even in the AI art scene, there's this whole discourse about the uncanny coming back again, right? They, they actually like that half-cooked version. That that low epoch version than the fully converged one. Of course, as designer, we want a performative converged uh, model. Um, yeah, uh, in interesting discussion. But I think I've gone again <laughs> off trajectory. Well, uh, well, you know, don't miss another point. Uh, I am afraid not because I think you are wrong. It's because maybe you are right. I hope so. <laughs> my, my, my fear is that uh, I use like two shapes, some words to make my point clear. Yeah. Suppose you are not uh, dealing with architecture, but uh, with the structure. Well, if we analyze one billion structures, and then we can produce structures with uh, analysis of machine learning would uh, uh, have made with those uh, billion structures. Well, from now, the structural engineering uh, ways to theoretical uh, theory of fields of uh, elastic or elastoplastic fields. So he has a realistic uh, uh, theory that he applies to the test. Well, the, the machine can do that with uh, I fear, what I fear is not, uh, it cannot. I fear it, it can, the machine can do that without knowing anything uh, about uh, field theory. It's my fear. But I suppose it would not uh, uh, let the theory completely go. Oh, uh, you were very modest when you say that this is not for making projects, but to uh, uh, help the, the architect to make projects. You were very modest in that, but we can fear that uh, it can be something, uh, something else. Of course, I don't think it, well, architecture is not uh, only the, a game of shapes. It has some uh, a structure, it has some thing to solve in the human life. <laughs> And the souls, well, this can save by, uh, uh, this can be solved by analyzing what was made before uh, a black box. Well, that is my fear. Well, actually, there is this whole um, uh, thing, research emerging about explainable AI in the sense that. Like I tried to show in the last project, like which part of the image is causing the classification, is causing the activation, right? So again, it's kind of a going back to, to see what the black box is seeing in order to then say, ah, oh, true, this is what I want. Because of, and often people don't do that. If, if it sees that it's performing well, it's fine. We don't have to understand anything. Um, so yes, this issue uh, has been, people try to, to kind of look at it from, from this sort of evaluation perspective, but at the same time, which I, I think I was trying to mention to Tassos is, at this, or the lady at the back, is that they also have been looking at 
more explainable uh, neural network architecture like, like graph neural networks where you could very specifically say things like, okay, the nodes represent something, the edges represent something. So while the black box is not so black anymore because we inject, in the case of graph neural networks, we inject um, domain knowledge very explicitly. And then before we throw it into the black box, right? Uh, yeah, so again, many coming from different uh, angles to, to resolve this black box issue. Uh, yeah, um, just wanted to, to reformulate uh, one thought. So, um, and again, that's a personal opinion. I find it truly strange to train on pixel learning, of combinations on pixel learning of images of architecture instead of uh, running unsupervised learning on 3D architecture, extracting the futures and its combinations, and then, with that extractions done, trying to learn how to combine them. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, for me, the approach to the pixel, uh, through, through this time of, of, uh, of, of studies through pixels, through images, through architecture, you know, is, 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 is kind of far from what architecture is for me. Exactly, the, exactly. This is, this is exactly. But, yeah. but bear in mind, the, 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 this paper is really not so much about the project, but the project as a means to explain the split of labor. Uh, as I mentioned, I have other projects that actually look at voxel models or, or, or models uh, in, with real messing, real building that I got from the, at the national level, right? So those, those are serious work, so architectural work. But in this case, it's really to explain, sometimes I have students who work on, because uh, I'm, I'm teaching deep learning, sometimes they say, well, Prof, the general image with low res versus the one that is high res, the low res is more fun because it's open for interpretation. And so in that sense, the low dimensionality of the output sometimes suggests the expanded uh, space for interpretation. Therefore, it, it, like if you generate a full face, like there's nothing more to do. I don't have to design it. I don't have to do any interpretation. But if you generate me a kind of a low res face, ah, okay, maybe I can do a bit the face, the nose and the eyes and all that. For, so from a design context, sometimes uh, a, a kind of low, kind of a non-fully generated perfect uh, image uh, or, or form, 3D, is sometimes can be useful. But I completely agree with you. Architecture is not about image of building, clearly. But in this case, it serves as a way to communicate that uh, to our own domain. Yep. No, I, I was just commenting that, uh, commenting that, because uh, it's, you know, for some of us that we study this kind of things, are a little bit worried that, um, uh, you know that uh, Neil Leach uh, announced the publish the, the, the first number of the architectural intelligence, uh, blah, 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 the spring is going to be published, yes? And, and most of the editors that are in, this, in, in the journal, you know, have been lately proposing, and uh, been following your work, this is what I'm saying, so, oh. uh, all together with Matthias and some more, you know, are proposing for this first uh, initial number of the first architectural and architectural intelligence design journal, scientific journal, works following that trend. Well, you know, actually, you are okay, the in, editor, in, in, but, Yeah, I'm, I'm in the editorial no, 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 no. <laughs> and at least for me, you know, we've been waiting so many years for the first journal, you know, uh, that is going to be addressing that. And you're going to get past the post. No, no, exactly. but, but the thing, the, the, the thing. <laughs> No, it, it won't be because actually that journal, if you look at the different topics, is way more expanded. It's just for for what is it good or bad? The fact, the fact that you've been looking at uh, Matthias' work, my work, Daniel Balajan, and I mean, we're, we're kind of a collective, right? We 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 like our kind of things, right? Which is not always performative or responsible for that. Uh, but we are interested in that neglected part. But clearly, that new journal is not about that. There are, you know, Achim Mengers and all those, you know, Philip Block, the, the you know, structure, construction, like 
real thing, you know. <laughs> so that, I don't think it, you ought to be worried about that. And yeah, it's it's much more all encompassing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is just more a comment than a question. When I was studying architecture, one of my I was dealing with a design project uh, problem, and I was I was stuck. And my and one of my professors told me that I should train how to um, learn from um, uh, existing uh, plans and sections from very well known uh, architects and buildings. And uh, he gave the example of one of Portuguese mm, well-known architects, Caesar, that he put a, a sheet, a, a transparent sheet, under, on the design of very well-known architects. And he goes with his hand and with, with a, a pencil, draw the, the sketching, the relations between spaces, and how the, how the sequence of spaces happens in different uh, plans from different architects, in order for him to understand and, and to learn how he could uh, develop his, his own uh, uh, path, his own track between spaces that he was dealing. Mm -hmm. and, and after this, I did that. I, I, I searched for a couple of, of uh, plans from architects, and then I put the shit, and then I, I trained myself in, in terms of the, 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 the way I could solve the problem I have and I, where I was stuck. So I, I totally agree with the, the issue about architecture and image, and uh, the, sometimes the, the scope of this kind of um, um, uh, approaches is uh, not only relations between spaces and the sequence between spaces and what you can do and, and, and how you can use spaces, but in, 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 a, certain, in a certain way, the, the, a conceptual framework about the, or a shape or a volume or a um, uh, I don't know, a, a design if you want. So my question or my, my remark is uh, if you think it is uh, possible to orientate or to um, put a little bit more focus on this kind of uh, training um, yeah, of, 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 of the space of what is not built uh, and, and, and less in what is the, 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 the material, the, 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 the the limit of the space yeah. or not? Right, this is the question. So if, if I, so you're saying that there are certain aspects of architecture learning that, are, that can't, some, at least not now, been somehow incorporated into this, this methodology, right? Like the idea of how we use the train ourselves by looking at... Yeah, yeah the, 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 the thing is not to look at the positive but the negative, not, not the shape to the, to the space. So. Um, uh, how we could do this? Well, yes, so there, there are, at the, for, for deep neural networks, actually you could look at specific, because in the end for deep neural networks is the loss, right? It's, which measures whether, how accurate, or how well it converges. So the loss could be say, you know, look at the black one, not the white one. Compute the mean, or the number of pixels that are correct for the black one instead of the white one, right? So there are explicit way to, kind of inject these very specific requirements or way of seeing, right? So as so we could say, okay, if you guess, if the model, the generative deep model, managed to get the spaces right more than the, the, the black part of the space, meaning the walls, then reward it, right? Give, then and adjust the weight when that happens. So th there are ways to do it. Uh, at the end, at the loss function part, at the end of the neural network, but at the same time, you can also do something at the beginning, which is the input. You could craft your data set in a very specific way that only allow the machine to look at maybe an abstraction. Maybe you throw in a, a visibility graph or something else uh, that, so that you only see that sort of thing. It's not seeing whatever that's irrelevant. Um, yeah. So theoretically, I think it's possible. Just that architects are traditionally not trained to to play with deep neural networks, because it's, it can be quite scary. Uh, and also because of the resources. Like my students suffered much because the computing power is not there and they just get dejected because the results are not good and, you know. <laughs>
Like, why am I wasting my time doing this? If I'm, not, I'm not even learning anything to them, maybe. Uh, but yeah, I'm still, still very hopeful. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we are going with the last question, and uh, then we can continue the discussion. Um, hi. I don't have to press anything, right? Okay. <laughs> so uh, this is not a question uh, for Emmanuel. It's a question for, like, I think, everyone here who who works in this field and uh, with this kind of stuff, because this is very foreign to me, and so it's a very maybe innocent, uh, but, but very ignorant question as well. But um, I'm here in, in this symposium, uh, I'm from the field of space syntax, uh, which attracted me when I was uh, studying in my master's, because it was something that allowed me to introduce theory into design, which was something that I found uh, extremely lacking uh, in my design uh, course. Uh, it was all very, uh, very artsy and not grounded enough. And so when I found space syntax, something that would, was telling me something about the design, something about space, I was getting something from it that I could then inject into my designs. It was very exciting. And so uh, when I, I see these kinds of things that I don't fully understand, and uh, my question is, what am I learning as an architect or as a uh, researcher, or what am I learning about the world, about architecture, about how things function from these kinds of methodologies? Because we saw uh, that Tassos learned something about Trump voters uh, in his work, or, uh, and, and that we can do multi-layered analysis that teaches something uh, about, uh, that relates space with other things, and that gives us new information. But when it's this kind of formal play, I have not yet fully understood what this teaches me, what it brings to me that is new and that I can use uh, in my understanding of architecture and the world. So I think this is it, and I don't want an answer just yet. Um, and also to bring uh, Inez and Seth Sethke's work uh, that hasn't been discussed at all yet. Uh, I think it's interesting and it's very contrasting that you two um, looked at an object, uh, objects and studied them, analyzed them, and in the process of creating uh, algorithm or to create more of that, you learn something about the object that you are studying. And are we learning something about the objects that we are studying in uh, that kind of process? And how does that work? Let's talk about that outside. So I think that's my request for you guys. Do you want to ask this question? Yeah, sure. Okay. Then I can ask the question and then we can do this if you can, you can start. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, uh, as I said, I'm um, in a research team, and we uh, we are a very transdisciplinary uh, group of people. Um, with my grammars, uh, we create a d data set, and then use that data set to, you know, uh, the computer engineers use that data set to train their network, uh, and then we try to classify the uh, point cloud Based, and photogrammetry based point clouds to you know classify the bricks bricks types and mortars uh, and then uh, we have an architect uh, who focuses on beam studies building information modeling and he adds that layer of information to the model so <laughs> I, I think we we are what we are trying to do is both uh, help to you know how to we scan a building and then uh, we, ha we don't even classify the parts automatically. We have to do it by hand, but uh, we automate that uh, process. Uh, additionally, we save the information about the units or the pattern units to the, that model so that uh, if anyone needs that in the future, that can be used because it's saved in all of it's in the same model. So I, I think we are using it uh, <laughs> not. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, in, in my case, the process is not uh, automated. So my research, this is my research, PhD research, and I have uh, analyzed like the geometric characteristics and not, not only the geometric characteristics, like the, uh, the materialities and the placing, and then I structured um, mathematically the, the principles that I found that were more, that, the, that were more common or, or that were similar, that, that things that could be generalized in mathematical principles that can help uh, those that want to apply them in the development of new ones. Of course, these principles always have to be uh, adapted some way to the, but it's not, nothing is automated in this part, but what I want is to facilitate the, the exploration of more designs, not to automate, but to save time in the implementation of several things that maybe I'm going to use many times and that the other will be used many, many times indeed with, the, 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 with an adaptation there or, or, or other, but, uh, but, I, but I don't use uh, space syntax in my case. It's, it's a little bit different. <laughs> okay, so um, we can continue the discussion with dinner. Uh, I think we are finished here. Um, we invite all of you to join us in Cotton Club. The direction is in the long fire. But uh, if you want, I can write it on the, on the blackboard so that you can go and get lost. Uh, at 9 o'clock. And we'll be there.